Hello there folks. This quick video is going to show you how to implement a five second timer. Recently I got a customer who said to me they would like to take a discrete input, say look at something uh, on a, a module, and after five seconds goes by they would like to turn on one of the outputs, and then after another five seconds goes by they'd like to have the second output to turn on. And then if the input gets reset, then they would uh, turn off the outputs. So this example will show you how to make that happen within the Crimson 3 programming environment. All right, if we navigate over here to our program, uh, so here's our screen that we're looking at right now. Currently what I've got on this example, uh, I've got uh, one of the graphite screens, and I've got a digital I.O. card in slot number two. This card has eight digital inputs and six relay outputs on it. What I've done is I've already went ahead and went to data tags and I've already mapped uh, a bunch of uh, tags, flag tags to the I.O. points as you can see here. You might take notice folks that uh, input number one and two you'll see the flag is yellow and the rest are green. The reason for that is uh, these all come in as active high and they're uh, sinking inputs so if you tie them to ground that's when they go off and so what I've done is I've added a uh, explanation point right here in front of it which knots that so that the logic will correspond correctly to how we're thinking if you will. <laughs> so if we go over here to programs on the left and we've got a bunch of programs here from another thing I'm working on but I'm gonna go ahead and add a new program right here and I'm gonna go ahead and rename this program five second logic even though it's gonna go up to ten but we'll call it five second logic here. Alright and we're first gonna ask the question we're going to say if, open parentheses, if input 1 over here on the left, or right, input 1, if it goes on, we'll drag this out there, like so. So if this input goes on, we're going to run some logic. So I'll, uh, true C programming, you could do it like that if you want to, or I always like to teach to actually ask the question. So I'm going to say if that particular point equals 1, two equal signs will ask the question, one equal sign assigns the value, so I'm going to leave it two. So we're going to say, first of all, if this thing goes on, we're going to start a little counter. I'm going to go my counter equals my counter plus one. So that's my little counter. And then I'm going to enter across, and I'll, the next line down here I might say if, parentheses, for instance, my counter is greater than or equal to five, that's my idea here in this five second timer, and parentheses, and then I'll enter, tab across. I didn't say that, but this is the open squiggly brackets, open brackets here, and if that goes greater than there, I'll tab across and I'll say output one should equal one. One equal sign will turn it on, and then I'll put the end brackets here. And then if I go down here, if I'm still, if the input one is still on here, and I get to where the counter goes greater than 10, I want to turn on the second output. So here I'll ask if, and it doesn't matter if it's capital or not, if, open parentheses, my counter, ah, can't spell here, is greater than or equal to 10, end parentheses, if that condition is true, then I'll enter across open brackets, enter, tab across, and I'll take digital output 2 right here, equals 1, that'll turn it on, and then I'll do a close bracket here like this. So you'll see here folks that this, uh, if I can point, I don't have my pointer tool working, but this open bracket here goes with this one, this open bracket here goes with this one, so I need one that follows this guy here, so I'll tab across, and do a uh, whoops, close squiggly like that. If you want to add text to your program, you can always do two forward slashes and you can type just some text here. So we can say here, if the input is on, start ah, the timer. And by the way, I'm going to actually run this program once a second. That's why I'm incrementing by one. I haven't done it yet, but you'll see here in a little bit how I'll do that. So there we go there. This section here, I'm going to add a little text in here so this will make sense to you. 
the my counter uh, timer and then down here I'll put another one here just so you can see here my if the my counter is greater than or equal I'll do this five turn on output like that and then down here we'll just do the same with turn on output too so since I'm going to be super efficient <laughs> I'll do this there all right so you'll see here I have not compiled the program so you see right here how oh, it's a yellow diamond means I haven't compiled the program so in crimson 3 click out here this button right here is the translate button. Now we should have a couple problems, or at least one that jumps up. I do not have a value or a uh, tag called my counter. I can also see right here that I spelled this one wrong, so I'll fix that real quick here. So I'll go ahead and hit this button here and let's see what happens. It's going to ask me, do you want to declare a new variable named my counter? I'm going to say yes. I want it to be an integer tag because it needs to be more than just a one or zero, so I'll say yes. And if we did the program correctly, we should get a green diamond right here. We sure do. And you'll see over here on the right-hand side, we have a new tag here called My Counter. So it compiled correctly. That works great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, pretend that, uh, uh, well, we're going to go ahead and set up what needs to call this program. So I'll go to the left-hand side. I'll click Display Pages. If I click up here on the word Pages up on top, you get under the global tab these four actions on power up, startup, tick, and update. We want to call this program every second. So in every second we'll call it. If that input stays on, it should count for us. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and I'll click on programs on the right side and I'll drag my five second logic out here into the on tick field. Okay. So that should work okay there. Um, yeah, let's just test this and see what happens. So I'll save my program. We'll download it. And let me go ahead and open up the web server so you guys can see the actual status of the uh, input stuff here. So if I turn on, I think this is input 2. Yeah, we're not doing anything on input 2. That has nothing to do with this. Let's try input number 1. So if I hold down input 1 for a few seconds, you'll see nothing happens. I want you to pay attention to these outputs right here. This is the, the important. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down input 1 again here. And you can see here after 5 seconds, output 1 went on. And there goes the other one. Yep. So you can see that's working. I got this uh, graph here a little backwards. I need to fix that. But you can see here that uh, the outputs both went on right here. But they never went off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new rule here. Anytime this input goes off, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the uh, the relay back off. So we'll go back here to Crimson, and let's take a look here. We're going to data tags. We're looking at input one. We've got this here. Okay. If I go over here to triggers, and on the triggers here, if I hit the pole down here and choose active off, I think that's correct. Let me double check my work here, team. Right now it's on. It's on by default the way this thing's working. So if I hold it down, now it's off. Okay. We'll try this. We'll go, we'll say active off. Oops. So we'll click here. We'll go active off. And we want to do a couple things here when this guy goes off. We want to uh, reset the counter and we want to turn both the relays off. So instead of putting that all in here as you, you can do, that's kind of a mess. I'm going to hit the pole down here and I'll choose the word complex. And I'm going to basically type a little text, this stuff. And I'm going to say basically I'm going to uh, go ahead and turn off output 0. So I'll drag that over here and I'll say equals 0, semicolon enter. And I'll drag digit output 2 right here. Yeah, oops, I keep losing my cursor. 0, semicolon enter. And I'll drag the my counter out here so that we can reset it as well also. Alright, if this is all correct, 
I should be able to do the OK button, but I'm going to change this up here and type do all of this stuff. All right, we'll click the OK button. It accepted it. Active off here means it has to transition from being on to the off state. So that's what's going to happen here. So let's go back to display pages. Uh, let's go click on our page here, save our program and download it. And let's see what happens here. Oh, let me go to the web browser so you can see the screen here. That way you can see the real screen. All right, you can see right now that input one is currently in the off position. If I go ahead and squeeze the unit here, you'll see that it's on. If I squeeze it again, it's off right there. Okay. Aha, I think I know what the deal is here. My inverse logic is not quite correct here because here I am squeezing it. And you can see, aha, let me fix something here, folks. It's kind of working the opposite of what I want to do. So I'm going to go over here. Let's try this. What do I have over here? Let me look at the program real quick here. Yep. And let me ch double cheat here. I'm going to look at this real quick. I just want to see what the status of this is here. All right, let's try it again here. Where's my browser? All right, it says it's off. So if I squeeze this now, it goes to the on state. After five seconds, the relay should go on. There goes the first relay. And after five more seconds, output two should go on. There's output two. And if I let go of this guy, the relay should have went off, and they didn't. Do that again. They're off there. I'm looking right here to look at my, oh, they went off right here. I just didn't hear them. So let's try it again here. We'll squeeze this here for five seconds. Another five seconds. There you go. And if I let go of that, there seems to be a delay. Because this should have triggered it to go off. Let's look here. Ah, I think I got my wording backwards here. All right. Let's reset this whole thing here. Okay. So here we go. We're going to try this. Input's off. We'll go ahead and hold it on here. There is five seconds. First output goes on. Another five seconds. The next output should go on. And you can see it there, the blue line. And if I let go of it, they both go off right away. I just got to invert these. Anyway, that's just a quick example on how you can use the program section to create a five-second little timer. Uh, if you got any questions, please let us know. Thanks a lot for taking a look at Redline HMI products. Have a great day.